right, so I'm in the studios at my school again, um, probably for the last time, um, because today, the day I'm recording this, is Friday, uh, May 14th, and tomorrow I leave to go to Michigan for a week, and then, you know, when I get back, it will be finals, and then, you know, once finals are done, I'll, you know, be graduated, so I won't really have access to these, you know, anymore, so um, definitely, you know, kind of bittersweet being in here, but, you know, we got one last shoot to do, so we're going to make the most of it. So these are the shoes that we're going to be photographing today. They are Adidas Ultra Boost, but they're, you know, the Game of Thrones edition one. So they kind of had like the themes for, you know, kind of each of the houses. I got, you know, the winter ones because I thought they were the coolest. Um, these are, you know, also the only pair of shoes that I've actually, you know, had to, you know, wait in line before the store actually opened to get just because, you know, they were kind of special and I wanted to make sure that I got them. Um, but the bottom of them has been, you know, kind of destroyed because they have worn these quite a bit because they are pretty comfortable so we're kind of going to have to avoid you know anything where I would get the sole of the shoe in the shot. So because the shoes are winter theme, I kind of just wanted to play off of that. So kind of right here, we just kind of have a selection of fake snow. So in here we have a bag from Michaels, kind of like glittery snow. I've used these um, before in a previous video. So these you know, have worked out good in the past. And then I also have kind of like two like snow kind of blanket cloths um, that I got these off of Amazon. Um, so these are kind of going to be like my base layer of, you know, the snow. And then the last bag in here is another thing I got off of Amazon. This is kind of like instant snow that you make. So you just, you know, have this little powder you get and add water. And then it kind of just makes this like little snow, like realistic looking snow. I'll probably stick with these two um, more often than not. Just because this, you know, does look a little bit more realistic with this. And also if I mix these two together, I'm, you know, never going to be able to separate them again. Um, but I did also have a canister, kind of like an aerosol spray of fake snow as well that I got from Michaels as well. Um, but unfortunately, I did forget it at home. It's not like I was going to actually, you know, probably not use it. But, you know, it just would have been nice to have you know, the option to if I needed it. But, you know, kind of just time to set kind of all this stuff up, which is probably going to, you know, take a while to get it exact the way that I want it. Okay, so I think this is a good first setup here. So this is kind of what the shot looks like right now. And we have three lights going. We got my main light here, which is this large softbox right here. And that is just, you know, giving light to everything on the set. And then my second light here over there is a light with a 20 inch degree, kind of just giving some, you know, fill light to the front. 
And then my third light here is this light with nothing on it except for a blue gel. And just kind of giving that you know, nice soft blue light that you see to kind of everything around here. Um, so this is kind of what we have with, you know, just this fabric right now. And then we're going to try some, you know, with this setup right now with some of the actual, you know, more realistic textures now. I will say the snow does not smell good at all. It's very chemically. <laughs> All right, so this looks kind of good from my perspective, but it's always going to be different when looking at it through the camera. So let's just see how this looks. All right, so this is kind of what it looks like right now with the fix and everything. Um, you can't really tell that well because, you know, you are looking at a monitor right now. Um, but, you know, this is what the scene looks like as well. I think it looks pretty good. Um, definitely could maybe still make some more fine tunes to this in Photoshop, but I think this, you know, is a nice first shot here. And then now I kind of just have to figure out what other shots I want to get. All right, second shot here. Uh, looks pretty good. Didn't actually take that long to make. And then it's where you can find a way to get in here without bumping anything. That's always the hardest part about these shoots. All right, so here we go. The setup here. So it's just kind of the shoe at a side angle. Kind of wanted to focus on the old spruce and then the little winter is coming section there. And then I kind of like built up the back one a little bit so it kind of looks like the wall into the show as well so I thought that worked out pretty well. All right so I still have about an hour before I actually need to you know start cleaning up. Um, right now I have two shots done. i um, trying to think of a third angle to you know pose the shoes in because um, you know I'm still new at this so I don't really know the best way to do it. Um, you know kind of just always sticking to the classic you know kind of side views because I feel like those are the go-to ones but I do know that I need to think of another one. All right, so kind of wrapping up now, just gonna do some you know, handheld ones for some close detail shots here. It's kind of hard to hold this with one hand, so let me just quickly put this around my neck so I don't draw this expensive fucking camera. Okay, here we go. I got snow on the lens, so this isn't good. <sighs> All right, that's better. And now I got it on the lens cap. All right, I think we've got enough shots. Okay, so we got a you know good amount of shots in here. You know some different ones, um, positions as well. You know three different positions, and then some just like variations of like close-up ones. Um, some of them are in focus, some of them are not because it is not easy to get close with the 80 millimeter lens that I was shooting with um, that doesn't have any. Are any of these in focus? Oh my god, I don't think any of these ones are in focus. Hold on. Oh yeah, these look, they just keep getting progressively worse. Oh, this one's okay, but yeah, it's very hard to do handheld stuff um, close up without a lens that, you know, focuses super closely like that macro was that was not working on me but yeah we got a good amount of stuff so yeah this is where the macro lens was not working which is disappointing but like I said again a good mix of some stuff here so just gonna you know hack everything up and then go into photoshop and edit these though it will not be fun cleaning all this fake snow up like I don't even know how I'm going to get this off of this fur blanket right now. Okay, so the editing actually didn't take that long, which is nice. It only took about 30 minutes on average, and it ended up with seven final images. So kind of compare that with, you know, it's like two hours per image with seven images. So that would have just been a whole lot longer. So it was very 
you know, lucky and grateful that, you know, everything just kind of worked out with the background and I didn't really have to do much retouching on that end. So kind of the main thing was just figuring out, you know, the color palette that I wanted to go with. Obviously, you know, I introduced the blue gel into it, so I kind of wanted to go with these kind of, you know, blue cast to it, which, you know, would match the shoes and go very nicely with the white snow. So I think the color palette definitely works very well across each image as well. So from each image, the retouching was actually pretty simple. It was mainly just, you know, cleaning up the, you know, seamless, you know, some of the shadows got on the background from, you know, this, the little snow mountains that I built. I didn't really want that. So I just kind of wanted, you know, a clean, you know, um, seamless. And then also just, you know, fixing some, you know, things like highlights and shadows, you know, some little bits of snow got places that I didn't want. Um, but it was, you know, really just pretty simple stuff. The only image that really took the longest, which was the aglet one, and that one really only took an hour, so, you know, not that much longer in comparison. But basically, I didn't like the way how, you know, both the white walkers aglets were coming from the right end of the image. I kind of wanted, you know, the walker one to be coming from the left, just kind of make it look more dynamic, because I think, you know, them coming from both the same end just looked kind of weird and boring. So basically, you know, I had to duplicate and kind of flip everything, and then, you know, kind of fix, you know, the warp of them, because some of the, you know, shoelaces were coming at an angle. I just wanted the shoelace, you know, be perfectly straight. So kind of just fixing all of that. And then once I kind of had every everything duplicated and flipped, I had to get rid of the, you know, original things that I didn't like. So having to get rid of that, you know, took a little bit longer. And then also, you know, my frequency separation action didn't work great with the snow either. So I did have to, you know, just end up cloning it, which actually, you know, works pretty well in that end. But that was, you know, definitely the you know, longest image it took, but again, only an hour or so. It wasn't actually that long, but I think, you know, that, you know, extra 30 minutes was definitely worth it because it just looks so much better with them coming from the aglets, uh, shoelaces coming from different ends of the image rather than the same one. It's much more, you know, dynamic. And then the only other problem that I kind of ran into was two of my images were out of focus. So with the lens that I was shooting, you couldn't really get super close to the, you know, subject matter. And with for these shots, I was shooting handheld. So I wanted to get a little bit closer, but I got a little bit too close in, um, into some of them. So, you know, they weren't in focus. But luckily, you know, in Photoshop, I was actually able to bring the focus back, which was, you know, this was the first time I actually did this as well. So it wasn't very complicated at all either. And it was definitely, you know, crazy that I could actually do this in Photoshop. Um, just shows you how impressive, you know, Photoshop is. Because kind of all the time you, we as a photographer, like, this is never a rule. Like, your images are out of focus. That's it. You know, you're screwed. They're not, they're, they're just useless. But the fact that you can actually, you know, bring them back is um, pretty amazing. All right, so my images turned out great. It was definitely a successful shoot. Kind of everything that I imagined and planned, you know, going into it as well. And it was probably, you know, my favorite of the three still life shoot photographies that I did. You know, the snow fabric and fake snow that I bought off of Amazon works perfectly. But, you know, sometimes you do have to take a gamble because, you know, when you're looking at the images online, you don't really get, you know, the whole perspective of it. But kind of what I found with Amazon is they have a lot of, you know, random and crazy stuff, which works well for me because a lot of my still lifes I just buy, you know, random and crazy things as well and then you know with the quick shipping as well it's just uh, very great for a person who does a lot of still lifes like me and you know unfortunately this was the last you know still life that I will be doing at these studios in my school because you know I have graduated now so I won't have access to them anymore so you know my still lives in the foreseeable future are not going to be you know as high quality as they have been in the past with you know all the equipment I've been able to use in the school but, you know, going forward, hopefully, you know, soon I will be moving into a uh, apartment in the city. And then from there, I'm kind of just, you know, building my own studio, buy a bunch of lights and stuff like that. Um, because they just love doing still life so much. You know, I'm able a lot of times to make these like other, you know, worldly environments, you know, with the fake snow, just create like this mountain of snow. Like, I just love doing those in still lives, um, you know, just having complete control over everything and just, you know, the meticulous detail of it. I just, you know, enjoy shooting still life so much. 
that I feel like, you know, the amount of time I want to shoot them, having to rent a, you know, studio in the city um, every time would just, in the long run, be a lot more expensive than it would be just, you know, to simply, you know, build my own studio as well. So, you know, hopefully in the future, <laughs> still life's not going to be, you know, as great um, and high quality, but, you know, slowly, hopefully over time, we will get back to that, you know, high quality of still lifes.